Welcome back to our beginners 3D animation course. In this video we're actually going to start doing some actual animation. We're going to start the bouncing ball tutorial. The bouncing ball tutorial is a tutorial that has been used for years and years to teach not only basic animation but also basic graph editor use because that bouncing ball motion it mimics the animation curve motion within the graph editor so there's a very easy correlation between the two things. So I'm going to go here on the left side of my screen underneath the toolbox down here are these preset view layouts. I'm going to choose the perspective slash graph layout. On the fourth one down for me you can see in the help line down here it tells you what it's called perspective or persp slash graph. When I click this it splits my view in half. I have the graph editor on the bottom half and the perspective view in the top half and I'm actually going to hide my range slider for now it's just so I get a little bit more space so my perspective view is not quite so uh, thin. I'll go to display UI elements and I'll uncheck range slider so I get a little bit more room here I can actually click and drag this line to adjust how much space to give to each window. So the bouncing ball tutorial. I mean it's used everywhere. I'm going to try and teach it to you the best I can. Uh, if you've been through any kind of basic animation course before you probably have done it before but it's always good to get a refresher. If you've never done it before that's perfect. We're going to be going through it step by step and looking at the basics of creating a simple animation. This will also get you used to using the graph editor as a very staple animation tool which you'll use in almost any animation you do going forward. So first we're going to need a ball to bounce. Let's go to create polygon primitives and sphere. So I have my sphere here in the middle. I'm going to hold down the space bar to bring up my hotbox, left click on the Maya button and I can choose a side view or a front view. One of the orthographic views though just pick one, doesn't really matter which. This is the left view. This dark line running through the origin of my scene will use as the floor. So my ball right now is halfway through the floor, but that's okay. We're just going to move it up for a starting position. It's going to start up in the air. Let's go ahead and just say about 15 units up in the Y axis. So translate Y 15. So I have my sphere selected here. You can see my P sphere shows up in the graph editor. And now we're going to start setting some keys. I'm just going to kind of block in the animation and then afterwards we'll go through and fine tune and tweak and adjust the animation curves within the graph editor here to get the kind of uh, timing that we want with the ball's movement. So first the ball is going to be bouncing across the room. So let's think about in our heads how fast the ball should bounce let's say about four seconds. So four seconds at 30 frames per second is 120 frames. So we know down here in our time slider that at frame 120, which is right here, our ball will be on the other side of the room. So at frame one, I can press shift W to key the translation channels of the ball at its current position, which is at a 15 in the Y axis up in the air at frame one above my origin. And at frame 120, I can actually move my ball across the room, and we'll know that at, within this time frame, the ball should be over here. And I'll actually hit Shift W again to set keyframes for my ball just moving across the room. So if I rewind and hit play, we can see the motion of the ball going across the scene. Now, if I look at my Translate Z, which is the axis we're using to move across the scene because I'm on the left view. If you chose the right view it may be the translate X uh, direction that you'll be using. In my graph view down here I'm going to hit the F key to frame my animation curve. I've isolated translate Z so we can see that animation curve. And you'll see it's not straight. It's this kind of wavy line. And when I hit play you'll notice the ball kind of starts slow, speeds up a little bit, and then as it gets toward where it's going it slows down slightly it kind of eases in and eases out of its starting and stopping uh, positions. For right now I'm just going to have it go straight across. So I'm going to stop this, 
I'm going to select my animation curve and up here I can choose one of these tangent presets and there's lots of them they do different things if you look here this straight line one this is called a linear tangent if I click it you'll see that my tangents which are these purple handles which are my tangent handles changes the way the curve is shaped so that instead of being this kind of ease out and ease in motion of the animation path it's actually a straight line from point A to point B when I rewind hit play now you'll see it's just straight across and that might actually be a little bit too slow for what I'm thinking and but we can change that later very easily look at my translate Y this is the one that's going to be controlling the up and down motion of the ball right now it's just going straight across and translate X is actually not going to be doing anything. Translate X, in the case of my view, is coming toward the camera. And right, we're not going to be working with Translate X at all. So I'm actually going to select the Translate X axis, right click on it, and choose Break Connections, which will delete all keyframes set for Translate X. So now Translate Z is moving the ball left to right, and Translate Y, which right now is not doing anything yet, it will control the up and down bouncing motion of our ball. And as I'm playing this animation, I do think four seconds is probably too slow. So how about we go ahead and shave off a second while we're doing this. I'm going to select both Translate Z and Y channels in my graph editor. I'll select both of these keyframes at the ends of my animation curves. You'll see they both have keys set at frame 120. So we're, instead of doing four seconds, let's do three seconds, which would be at frame 90. So here in the stats window for what frame it is, I'll select the number that's in there right now, which is 120, type in 90 and hit enter. And that moves my keyframes back 30 frames, one second. So rewind, hit play. And that seems a bit more in line with what I'm thinking. And it might even still be too slow, but as we move through the animation, we'll be able to fine tune that as we go. So now we're going to be working with Translate Y predominantly. I'm going to choose Translate Y channel, isolate it, and press F to kind of view it here in my scene. And right now, where the ball is, is as high as it's ever going to be. Every time it bounces, it's going to lose some of that height. Unless you actually throw a ball down, it will then bounce higher. But if you just drop a ball, it will never bounce as high as its starting position. It will lose some of that height as gravity is pulling it down toward the ground as it is bouncing across the room. So while gravity is pulling it down, when it gets to the end of the animation, it should be on the ground, right? So we go to frame 90 then, which is now the end of our animation. And instead of Translate Y being 15, let's choose Translate Y being 1, hit Enter. And that puts the ball on the ground. So I'm going to select my Translate Y channel, because I don't want to worry about changing my Translate Z or X channels. I'm going to right-click on Translate Y and choose Key Selected. So now you see I have this curve for my Translate Y. And if we play the animation, the ball is going to be lowering down. And you'll notice, if you look at the path of the curve in the graph editor, and the path of the ball as it's moving across the scene, it's following this path exactly. It's doing this kind of sloping path down from the top to the bottom like a slide at a playground. So keep that in mind. When we're dealing with the y-axis, bouncing up and down the ball, in the path of the animation curve it's going to mimic each other. We're going to get a good one-to-one -one correlation of what we're doing in the graph editor with what we see in our scene. So rewind, hit play. We want that first bounce to pretty much just the ball to arc downward and hit the ground around this moment here. So let's rewind say around fifth, frame 15 which would be about half a second and let's change the translate Y to 1 which is the floor hit enter, you see now the ball becomes positioned on the floor line choose my transit Y again and choose key selected, right click key selected. Now because we place this key here the ball is going to move down and then you'll see in the graph editor it never goes back up again and that's okay we're going to be adding more keyframes to make those bouncing motions. Let's rewind, hit play, it hits the floor and then you'll see it slides across. So I would expect another ground hit around here somewhere let's say maybe if we look at where it is when it hits it bounces and hits again so something around here let's say frame 40 just to keep it round numbers I'm going to right click on my translate Y channel and key select it again so now I have my second 
keyframe set for translate Y, placing it on the ground still. No bouncing motion yet, but it's hit the ground and then it slides across. But I've set a keyframe here, so I know that the ball hits the ground right here at frame 40. So from 15 to 40, that's a little less than a second long. It hits, bounces, hits the ground again, hits the ground again, hits the ground again. We're going to do a couple little bounces. Boing, boing, boing. You can kind of say it in your mind as you play the animation to kind of pinpoint where you think the ball, the ball hitting the ground should make sense. So let's see, this is around frame 60, let's say 65. I'm going to right click on Translate Y and key select it again. Now we're getting toward the end of our animation. We have to expect the ball to be being pulled toward the ground with gravity, to be losing its height with each bounce. It's not going to be as high as it was. It's going to hit, bounce up, but not as high, and hit, and then bounce up, but not as high, hit, and bounce, bounce, bounce. A couple little bounces before it comes to an end. So let's rewind, hit play, bounce, 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 bounce. So let's say we're going to put a couple more in here. Bounce, 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 like this. So let's find, we're looking at frame 65 to 90, which is 25 frames. We're going to have a couple, two more ground hit keyframes within here. And it should bounce quicker as it comes to the end of the animation. These bounces are start off long and high, and then they, as they get closer to the ground and not have as much height to the bounce, they hit the ground sooner. 65 to between 75 and 80. Let's say like 77. I'm going to right click on translate Y and key selected. So I have my second bounce between the two here. Or 77 to 90. Let's just kind of put it right here in the middle around 83 or so. And again, we're going to we can change these. Again, I key selected. We can change these later as we manipulate the timing of everything. So as I hit play, you'll notice the ball just kind of slides across. But we have these keyframe markers set for where the ball should be hitting the ground. So in between each of these ground hits is when the ball should be at its apex of the bounce. It should be bouncing up and then coming back down. And so as it hits the ground here at the frame 15, bounces into the air and comes back down and hit the ground again at frame 40, it'll be at its height, at its highest point, halfway between both points. So 15 to 40, that's again 25 frames, so we're going to split the difference slightly and say around 27 or so, it'll be at its highest point. There's a couple ways we're going to do this. First I'm going to set a keyframe with the ball being up in the air at its bouncing height, set at frame 27. So let's say we're going to move it, let's say up to 10 units high, hit enter. I'm going to choose my translate Y channel and key selected. And you can see what happens here in the graph editor. We have now this hill within our animation curve. And now you'll see the ball copies that motion in our side view up here. Hit play, like so. And don't forget, we're going to be manipulating the timing of everything as we go. So when we started, the ball was at 15 units high, and in the second the first bounce it's at 10 units high so we've lost five units of gravity and we might need to tweak some of that too as we go through tweak some of the heights a little bit maybe move it up a couple units just to make it look the best it can but right now we're just kind of setting keyframes blocking in our floor hits as well as our bounce apexes at the highest point of the bounce in between each floor hit so we're frame 40 to 65 is another 25 frames or so we're going to go about halfway. So let's say around frame 52. Let's move the ball up to about 8 units high. Translate Y, key selected. About between frame 65 and 77. That's about 12 frames. So we're going to go look at like frame 71 or so. Let's go ahead and move this up about five units. Key selected. And now we're getting to those little bounces at the end. We have between frame 77 and 83, which is only about five frames anyway. So let's just kind of choose frame 79 or so. And we're just going to kind of move it up slightly. It looks like about three units. 
key selected. And you might need to adjust that. Instead of frame 79, maybe it needs to be 80. That looks a bit more natural within here. And then between frame 83 and 90, let's just add a slight little hop. Let's not even go to 2. Let's go like 1.5. Enter. And key selected. So we hit this. Okay, so let's see what it looks like. So it definitely needs some work. I think these two bounces in the middle are probably a little too long. That's okay though. But you can kind of see the correlation between the ball's movement in our view, in our scene, as well as the ball's movement here in the graph editor. So one thing we need to uh, change is that the ball right now doesn't actually hit the ground. It just kind of swings through. It kind of just flows through the path of the ground. It kind of just kind of swings through here, back up, swings through, back up. There's no striking the ground. And so we can adjust our animation curves tangents to have a more bouncing motion of the ball as it moves through the scene. If we select our curve, you'll see all the tangents here. We can go back up to our tangent buttons through here. We have a couple of different options. If you look down in the help line in the lower left corner as you mouse over these, you can see what they're called. This uh, here is spline tangents. If we choose this, you can see how the tangents change on our animation curve and see the results of the path of the animation curve whenever we hit play or just looking at the curve, you can kind of see what happens. So this is with a spline tangent applied. I choose this and choose clamped. No difference there, but if I choose linear, now you see it's very spiky. And if I hit play in our scene, you can see the result. We do, as you'll notice, get that kind of striking the ground motion. But at the top of the bounce, though, it's this pyramid shape. And so instead of being a rounded hill path or a bounce path, it's this very linear straight lines between keyframes. So we don't quite want that either. So let's choose this and let's look at flat tangents. We get this result, which is still curvy at the bottom, which is pretty much what we had to begin with. And then we have step tangents. If I click this, you see a much different result. When I hit, select my ball and hit play, and make sure I, I want to isolate translate Y. So I hit play, and we get a very different result of our ball. What step tangents does is it keeps the value of the channel, or in this case the Y translate Y channel, at the same value until it changes to a new keyframe, which it will change the value at that point. So it literally transports or it moves within a split second in one frame, it moves from one value to the next one at the keyframe. And then it keeps that value until you get to the next keyframe, it changes value and steps up here, keeps that value, steps down here, keeps that value, steps up here, and so on. So you get this very disjointed look to our uh, bouncing ball. So that's not quite what we want either. That was step tangents. This is plateau tangents. It's very similar to the flat tangents. So depending on the, the shape of your animation curve, these different tangent buttons will do different things. Now none of them are really getting the result that we're looking for when it comes to a ball bouncing. But instead of selecting the entire curve when we apply these tangents, how about we just select the bottom keyframes where the ball is hitting the floor and change those keyframes to linear. Now we're getting somewhere. Now you see the the path of the animation curve flows down to the floor, strikes it sharply, flows through the air, strikes the next one, flows through the air, and so on. So now let's hit play in our scene and look at our ball. Much more bouncy. Much more what you would expect with a ball bouncing. So here we've laid the framework of this ball bouncing through our scene. It's still got a lot of work to do. We're going to be messing with the timing of the ball flying through the air, getting these bounces to be timed more properly to get a better result. Maybe shorten some of these bounces down a little bit to get more of a natural look and continue with our bouncing ball tutorial. I'll see you then.